Welcome to this FTA roundtable discussion. I'm Jonathan Rogue, president of the Flotation Tank Association, and joining you here today to be your host on this holiday special roundtable. And it's a pleasure to be here today uh, as your host, engaging in this conversation among my fellow peers and entrepreneurs in the float industry and wellness sectors. Um, as we step into the holiday season, we understand it's a pivotal time for all of us to maximize our outreach and sales. Today, we'll sidestep traditional advertising to focus on a variety of creative strategies to enhance our holiday sales. Our discussion will cover the strategic use of social media, not just for posting, but for building real connections with our community. And we'll, d we'll dwell into the art of crafting impactful text and email campaigns that truly resonate with our guests. Additionally, we'll share insights on how to participate in local community events that can not only enrich your brand uh, presence, but also attract more customers to your center. I invite everyone to share their experiences and ideas. This is a collaborative space designed for mutual growth and learning. Your insights are valuable and together we can support each other's successes. And I want to assure you all that the insights we share today will be preserved for future reference. A recording of our roundtable will be hosted on our website, allowing you and others to access and implement the strategies we discussed today well beyond this meeting. Let's make this holiday season a standout one for our businesses. So we'll let this webinar begin. And uh, welcome, everybody. We have a, quite a few of you here today. So thank you for dropping uh, your float centers in the chats. Uh, I know personally, I'll I'll definitely go and uh, and like anyone, especially if you guys are new. You know, this is a great opportunity to share. So, uh, I guess to get started, how many of you are? Well, first I'll ask: Is anyone on their first holiday season advertising? So a few of you. So this is going to be a pivotal time in the moment of building your float center because I can tell you. Without a doubt, across the board, wintertime, this time of the year, at least for uh, most of us, the holiday season is a huge time to sell these gift cards. And uh, there's a lot that you can gain from this conversation. Um, how many of you guys are feel like you have a real good hand on your holiday promotions yeah, no. currently? Awesome. So the ones who rose their hand or, or you know, uh, chimed in there, you guys are going to be fundamental in making this discussion uh, successful. So with that said, we'll actually open it up to those who feel like they have a really good, strong grasp on the holiday promotions. And uh, and we'll start there. I saw Matt Beck. I think, uh, is it uh, Telesa? Am I saying that right? Remember to unmute yourselves if you guys want to talk and you feel free to do so. Yeah, I can start since you had mentioned my name, Matt Beck and Flotate. Yeah. This is uh, my, I opened my first center in 2017. So doing the math, I think this is my seventh holiday season. Um, I don't know about recommend, I'm going to refrain from maybe recommendations, but I can experience share a bit. And uh, a couple of things that I've, some adjustments I've made over the years and some of the things I think about is, you know, we were really loose with expirations initially, as a lot of the float industry is like, no expirations, we don't want to create stress. Um, as a business, we've chosen that we put expirations on everything just to protect ourselves, and that's a whole different conversation. But in our first Black Friday or two, we had year expirations on the purchases, and something we found was at this time, you know, a year later after the sale, instead of people wanting to buy more, instead all of their expirations were coming up. So we we're dealing with a lot of phone calls about people like, oh, can you extend my expiration? on floats they bought during the previous Black Friday. So that didn't make sense. Like, so I started thinking as we were doing our sales throughout the year, when do I want these to expire? So we started doing six month expirations. We're giving a great deal. It's the cheapest they can buy floats. I don't feel bad putting a little bit shorter of an expiration on it. And I think six months is more than fair. And when you think about it, six months puts us right at like Mother's Day, which is when we'd have another one of our big sales and get a lot of success. So. By putting a six month expiration on it, we're setting them up to be ready to buy again at another big between Mother's Day, Father's Day uh, sales. So that was a big takeaway from early on is, is is setting the thinking ahead a bit of when your other sales are going to be and set the expirations accordingly. 
and another thing just uh and then so that's a little thought on black friday and with holidays so it's more gift card sales which they crush they do great generally uh good luck to everybody on that there's a lot of different strategies um but so december we typically have a lot of sales and we tend to be a little bit slower in the tanks because everybody's so busy there's holiday parties everybody's kind of all over the place so a little slower in the tanks but huge sales January turns into super busy because now all the float, all the gift cards are coming in, but a little slower on sales because it's all gift cards coming in. So you get a big influx. A lot of those people are new. So something we think about is like, okay, make sure we have something for all the new people coming in in January. So that's kind of like not so much insight on what to do for the promotions, but just some bigger picture thoughts to kind of consider while you're, while you're planning your promotions is, you know, now just think about when they expire so you don't, you know, step on future promotions. And then when you have all these new people coming in from the gift cards in January, we do a membership drive in January. We do half off the first month. So when they come in with their gift cards, we're ready to put them in in another, okay, what's next? We just had an amazing experience. Make it really easy for them to transition to that second and third floats, which are essential in getting people to float regularly. But those were some thoughts I had. Very good. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Jeannie, you had your hand raised. Make sure you unmute. I did. Hey, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, we're going into our seventh uh, holiday season. Um, a couple things that I would definitely recommend is don't change like your booking system. <laughs> don't change the way people can buy stuff. We made that mistake uh, a couple years ago, and it was horrible. Um, we do work with Matt, I will say that. Um, and we have really good holiday sales. Uh, Matt Phillips, I mean. Um, and one thing to piggyback on what Matt bet matt beck said is check your state laws as far as gift cards because i know we're in maryland gift cards um, are good for five years so they can't expire any sooner than that i don't know if other states are the same or but just check their check your state law um, but when we do credits like discounts on credits we always do expire them and make sure that's very well documented um but yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to hear what other people do and uh, good luck to during this holiday season for everybody. And and I think it actually makes sense that Matt, you bring that point up about the legacy of the actual promotion that you run anyway. And in addition to you, Jeannie, these are first, th these concepts are actually the first steps that you should think about when you're setting up a promotion. Like don't short circuit anything else that you plan on doing uh, down the road, because this, this, holiday promotion is what's going to stack your booking for the next few months. And that's true for everyone that I've spoken to. So um, the holiday promotion is a great lead in to keeping those bookings coming. And Matt's absolutely, and you guys are absolutely correct. Like, I mean, they're, they're, they're a huge amount of first time guests. Um, and, you know, you have to think about it. Like that's, that's where the origin of the gift cards come from. Um, now, for those who know about my promotion, sometimes that's not actually the case. Now, some people will give out those gift cards because I have a very special deal that I do, uh, in particular, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday. But you end up getting people who stack the credits for themselves, which can actually short circuit your memberships. So look at all the different variables and make sure you're planning accordingly. Um, Matt, do you have anything you'd like to add to this discussion? I can see you're just kind of ruminating on it. You don't have to yet, but. <laughs> and, um, listen, I, I think um, going back to what Matt Beck, kind of just to talk about what Matt Beck and Jeannie were saying, I, th I think Matt Beck kind of hinted at this. Um, I mean, it's always a good time to sell gift cards, you know, um, in the holiday season. But going back to what Matt, Matt Beck said, you know, it's a really good time to sell packages or where you can create that kind of like 180 day, you know, expiration for Black Friday and for, you know, Cyber Monday. Cause I do find that a lot of people are just, are more interested in buying for themselves at that time period where they become more interested on the back end for buying for somebody else. So um, I think that's one way to navigate the laws because typically with gift cards, sometimes there's like five year expirations and such on that. So one, one way by, I think Matt Beck, you know, typically he does do packages for um, for Cyber Money and Black Friday. And I think that's one way to navigate that is to look at it as you could do kind of more of like a package-based setup. That's if you like run Helm or QD. I'm sure you're on any other booking software too. I'm thinking specific to Helm, but, and then do more gift cards on the back end. I, 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 I like that model, you know, personally, you know. I actually think it makes sense. And, and I think we should explore that 
in in just a moment here, but I wanted to make sure Rebecca could could get her thoughts in too. Rebecca, if you'd like, you can jump in. Thanks. Um, uh, and thank you for hosting this. It's so nice to see so many faces, new and familiar. Um, uh, but you mentioned, and that has been kind of clicking for me too, you know, the short circuiting of the memberships, you know, being still in my first year and still wanting to build that membership, you know, that's the only thing I get a little anxious about around, you know, I mean, Matt has got me really dialed in. I'm, I'm so stoked with everything that he's been doing for us. He's, he's been keeping me alive over here. Um, but that is one thing I do get worried about is, you know, people just like glomming on tons of, you know, Black Friday sale deals for themselves. And then, you know, how do I still keep building that membership model when I have such a good deal? Very true. And, and for anybody that doesn't know Matt Phillips, um, he is a he's an expert content creator. Uh, and also advertiser. Um, and and I got to give him a shout out because he's here and he's willing to to share with you with you all. So any information he's willing to share is going to be like pr pretty golden. Um, obviously, some of the stuff is more technical and uh, he does provide consultation services. I don't know how his books look, but as a side note, he is also a partner of the FTA, which we very much appreciate. So thank you, Matt. And uh, thank you for sharing, Rebecca. Uh, I think your points are absolutely valid and uh and in, and with that said, um, I think it would be it it would be interesting if if we could explore Matt and well <laughs> both Matts uh, if we could explore a little bit on how you actually focus on selling the packages during the short time period, and I would assume that you're probably putting a shorter exp exp uh, expiration on that so that they come in during the holiday sale. Does that sound about right or? Yeah, I don't know. Are you talking to Matt? I don't know which Matt you're talking to. Yeah, I'm talking, talking to both Matts because okay. it's impossible to identify. I mean, I you know, yeah. you both work together anyway, right? Yeah, I mean, I would say... Yeah, I can... Oh, yeah, go for it, Matt. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I've worked with Matt a long time, too, and he does excellent work, so just vouch for him there. I bought one of my first flute tanks from him initially from Superior. But anyway, but uh, yes, to clarify, packages and single floats now and member and uh, gift cards later. In Florida, gift cards can never expire. So I'm jealous of the five-year expiration even. Um, and we make it, we make sure our memberships are always the best value. And even though the single floats we may say, sell now are technically a touch cheaper than our memberships are, we have lots of amazing perks with our membership um they get free time upgrades so we stack up our memberships and when i send the emails i also have sign up for membership at the bottom of my email and have a little blurb about how our members will always be the best deal and we value them so i not to take away from our memberships but and especially when you're new i mean it was hard to get memberships going up in our first year or two because nobody's ever floated before so i we we tried to, but we found that focusing on just getting people in and floating uh, worked out really well in the short term to build our membership over the long term. So don't really panic if your memberships are a little slow in the beginning, um, but more important to get people in and floating and experiencing it because the more people floating, the more people on the street talking about floating, the more people that are be coming in to float. Very true, especially when you first open. Uh, and if you're if you're here now and this is your first holiday, just think of this as a lead generator. This opportunity, the holiday sale, is a lead generator for the next six to seven months or longer. Like, and I mean, because everything kind of cascades on itself. You know, if you get if a new person comes in, they become an experienced person that then tell five additional new people, and that's what you're hoping to do is build that momentum. Um, and there are several ways to continue to remind people that this is a thing. Um, and, and again, what Matt uh, Phillips specializes in and on, on some of our other consultant members, um, they specialize in helping with Facebook advertising and Google advertising. And these these resources are very valuable. I know it's a little bit of a it takes a little bit of courage to say, hey, am I really going to invest money into Facebook? It can seem daunting at first, but. Um, it does work. You just have to have it set up properly and make sure that you have somebody always monitoring the back end of that. Um, go ahead, Travis. Make sure you're unmuted. Um, so I just wanted to say when it comes to expiries, um, one thing to look at too, in BC, 
I don't know if it's different everywhere, but in BC, if you have a gift card for a service as opposed to a dollar amount of a gift card, the service gift cards don't expire, whereas the dollar gift cards do. Um, so that would be something to think about as well. Cool. Interesting. Um, thank you for sharing, Travis. Um, so I wanted to just uh, um, just add a little bit to the membership thing. Um, and, and many of you might know, and again, I, I didn't want to come to this webinar and just be like, well, this is what I'm going to do. I want to add value because you guys already heard about the powder keg and it does not work for everyone. That's been confirmed. Um, I've, I've, I've tried to help like even Matt, Matt Phillips, like it depends on how you run your business, if certain strategies will work. So to just keep in mind, if there's something that I share or something that anyone shares, there are underlying variables that can sometimes affect how well a sale will actually perform. Um, but I am on my sixth holiday. And even from the beginning, I have found success by, and, and I just was very disciplined. I never discounted services ever, except for one day of the year. And that's Black Friday. And what that does is, is it caught, it, I, I named it the powder keg because it's like a fuse that burns all the way until one day. And it's the most important day where people are going to centralize all their attention into building, a, buying a gift card. And so we still do that to this day, but we've revised it over time because now we have new services. We have fire and ice. We even have a salt cave and two therapeutic massage suites. Um, so this year with the memberships, though, instead of worrying about the memberships being short circuited, we actually are giving our members an additional discount on top of the discount that we're providing on our gift cards. And we're strategically using this as a way of pushing memberships. And we predict that we will probably sell 30 to 40 memberships as a result of that. That's and cool. I know a lot of you are like, wow, but does that make sense, Matt? Like, yeah, I think that's, I think that's great. Um, the one thing I like, I know you haven't did dive too much into powder keg. Um, but John, that I do want to tell you that pulling the data from what I saw from running it last year, there was one model that I did see that worked on the back end. I didn't see it really work so well for Black Friday for the two. I only did it for two people, but where where you started at retail and then you went down by ten dollar increments um, at each level, I did see where that would work. Like for example, like eighty nine, seventy nine, sixty nine, fifty nine, or you could have four levels or maybe even five. But I do want to say that I did find a common theme that that worked really well in the back end of holidays at $10 increments. Um, you know, uh, but no, going back to what you just said. Yeah. That, that's something I've always wanted to point out too. to many people is like, yeah, if you want to run, like I'm very strategic about trying all year long to keep, you know, the offer for new customers above the membership rate or at, you know, so if on Black Friday, let's say you do undercut it in some way. I think that's a great model, whether it's powder keg or whether it's single float or whoever's going about it. Yeah, by just making the member feel, feel even more special by giving them additional 10, 20 percent off or whatever it may be. You know? Yeah. And just for anybody that doesn't know, I'll just give you a real quick briefing on what this how this actually works. I mean, that the first part of what Matt was describing, and just to kind of give a little bit of clarification, what he means by the tiered discounts, this is precisely how it works, at least how I do it. And I think that you're mentioning that you found success on the back end, meaning like through the month of December for the holidays. Yeah, um, not for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but more when people are more like December 10th on, like as far as ad wise, uh, in-house, I feel like, you know, works, you know, at the beginning of December, but. Yeah. So, so how this works is, is if anyone's interested in potentially exploring the idea is it's, it's essentially a tiered discount. So if you buy one of something or one gift card, it's $5 off. If you buy two, it's $10 off each. If you buy three, it's $15 off each. And if you buy four, it's $20 off each. So you see how the exponential growth starts to build on the gift cards and it, and it actually drives people to the higher quantity. And uh, when we developed the strategy, it seemed to work because people actually wanted to buy multiple services. Now we weren't like, you know, some people may be stacking them all up for themselves, saving them. Um, but, uh, it, we focused it on two days. And then what we actually saw was is that the holiday, we just, we just advertised regular sale, 
regular price gift cards. And the month following that on the back end was actually huge. Like, I mean, massive amounts of gift cards were sold at full price. Um, so uh, it'll be, it, 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 I will admit that last year we did see a drop off from the year fo- prior. And that's probably just because of a fatigue. I would imagine like regional and area fatigue, maybe it's audience fatigue because we don't, we're not in a huge big city. Uh, Appleton is not big by any means. So we might've maybe reached almost everyone that, that had the interest, but we're still building audiences and we still get attention for it. Uh, but I will say for me personally, like when I was running this, pr- when I run this promotion, I spend about 2000 to $3,000 on Facebook in two weeks. So there's a lot of money that goes into that uh, advertising funnel. Um, but I am absolutely confident that I will make that back uh, five, six times over at least, you know, that's what the, that's what it's always been. And I'm not relying necessarily on the metrics that Facebook's showing me. I'm just looking at the sales and seeing where it's coming from. So, but yeah, so now that you guys know a little bit about the powder keg, does anyone else have any other, and and also what Matt, Matt, Matt does a little bit. um, I would really like to hear a little bit more about, about your strategies too, Matt, like what you do on the back end is I know you're focusing mostly on the, the packages, single floats, but if anyone else has any other, strategies that's worked for them we'd love to hear it please chime in andrew float seattle you got anything buddy (laughs) nice to see you here buddy i have a couple of questions actually Mm -hmm. um it's this is only my second year um with the float pods um and we also have a salt cave so we have both wet and dry salt therapy modalities um my kind of questions were has anyone and i know this is a little off topic since we're talking about holidays but i have been approached by a um, football player that grew up here locally and wants to work out some stuff during his off season um for the float pods etc has anyone else had any kind of um, relationship like that? Now, I have marketed out to probably about six of our local high schools that are really, really big in football and sports, you know, the whole white bread, meat and potatoes, Southern thing, you know, because football on Friday, Saturday nights. And I've had no response from any of those coaches or any of that. But this football player that has reached out to us um, actually is a local high school student um, who is now on a probably not NFL, but he's out of, he's in Canada. Um, So we're trying to figure out what's the best approach and how to go after him and get his endorsement for some of these local high school coaches, because football is pretty big with the high schools that I marketed to. Um, And just trying to get a little bit of of feedback. We do really, really well with gift cards. We don't do memberships. Um, We do offer a first time client buy one, get one, because we tell them that the first float doesn't, the first float's always that unknown. By the second one is that's when the angels sing and everything good that is going to happen happens. Um. So I'm not worried about my, that um, because we also have our salt cave business, which was an existing business that I bought. So we've been able to market to that clientele pretty heavily. Yeah. Uh, so, so it sounds to me like uh, like it's a two part question. Uh, the first part's a little bit more of the on the PR side, which the FTA does address. Um, if there is one thing that I can say, uh, are you a, are you a member of the FTA? Yet, Krista? Yeah, Krista. I joined. Um, I actually went to the Salt Therapy Association conference in September, and I met the president and at the table, and was like super excited, and came home and joined. You mean right. you joined the Salt Therapy Association or the FTA? No, I went to the Salt Therapy Association's oh. conference in September in Indianapolis. The FTA oh, gotcha. Table there with the president, and I can't remember her name. Blonde lady, hey, Kim Hannon. Her. She's the president of the float conference, right? And but, I met her. They yeah. had a table. I got all the information. I was super excited, and um, you, because you, after I 
bought my float pods, we were kind of left swinging in the wind. So we had a lot of trial by error learning curves. And um, so as soon as I got back home, I immediately, like within a day, joined the association for the float association because I didn't know anything about it. So, so send us an email about your question involving the PR with the, with the athlete, because there are ways of leveraging that. Uh, and okay. we'd be, and we'll, we'll respond back to you. Uh, but for this conversation, we're going to focus mostly on the gift card side of things and the okay. holiday promotions. Um, and uh, I think that your strategy, I mean, it's totally valid. One thing that I think myself and, and probably others would agree <clears throat> is that the first float is obviously you, you would need to find a hook after that. Like you want to get them incentivized. So a lot of folks will actually sell the first float. And then after that, they'll offer them a package of some sort or they'll mm -hmm. do, if they have the the funnel set up, they'll do very specific targeting um, that will also lead them into some strategy of, you know, return visits. Um, and yeah. uh, that's we fundamental do, uh, for your business. Yeah, we do have package pricing. And then we also have bundle packages where, um, because I go off, because I'm from Florida, so um, even though I live in Georgia, so we joke and call it the salty oasis. So we have, you know, uh, the hot and salty package, which is an infrared and a float, the hot and meaty, which is, I think, I think that one is the either the infrared and the massage. So we have cute little names and we have them all bundled. And we sell quite a few of the bundled packages. And you focus most of these sales during the holidays, you would say? Three, throughout the year. Now, okay. through the summer, we were a little bit slower. But again, September 1st was our one-year anniversary. So okay. now the Salt Cave that was an existing business that had been closed down for about five months before I bought it. And I walked in, when I bought it, I walked into a 9,000 uh contact client list so i added in the float pods and okay. i changed up some stuff and what have you so i had a client base from yeah. which to to work with to and draw upon to, yeah. to new um, well the, well for this round table i think there's going to be a lot that you can learn um and also uh you know if you have any holiday sales strategies feel free to chime in but i want to make sure that we can also uh get to uh is it lindy yeah, please uh, sh share with us. Hi, thank you. Um, so I just have kind of a clarifying question. So Matt Phillips, you were talking about the strategy you use. You like is it's leveled strategy. So you go down ten dollars, or you know, reduce ten dollars per level, which is kind of like the powder keg strategy, I think. But um, it is it is it is a powder keg, I guess. What I um, so it's Jonathan's strategy, but I guess so what I was saying is um, I ran it for a lot of people last year. Right. And I have a lot of data. And the, the one thing that I did find was it, I feel like every float center is very different. You know, you have some float centers that they open up and they're just jam busy. And then you have some float centers, they open up and no one's coming in the door. Right. And um, you know, it really depends on, you know, what kind of float center you are and you know, how at capacity you are, but let's say like you're, you know, on the lower end to a medium sized, you know, float center to where um, you're not having a ton of people come in during the holidays and buying gift cards all the time. And you, you need something a little more aggressive. I guess what I'm saying is what I found that does work um, around the clock for pretty much everybody for the powder keg would be, I found that $10 increments, like for example, if your retail was 89 and then he went instead of yeah. five, not saying that five won't work for some centers, but I guess I found the common theme of the people that did work would have been, it went, it went down by $10 increments. So, and especially if you're like, you know, if you're at an 80, if you're at 89, I feel like maybe you can go five tiers, 79, you're probably going a little too low there. You know, you're probably going 79, 69, 59, 49, 39. So you probably want to cut that off at 49, right? Oh. Because you're getting yeah. really low there, right? Uh, so, if you're at a if you're at a higher number like 89 or 85 to 89 maybe you can go five tiers and that'll really crush it uh, i mean that's to me that's crazy that you're willing to go at ten dollar increments because like i mean you're a, what you're saying is is that it's 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 it'll be so it's 10 20 off 30 off and then 40 off on the quantity um 
yeah. one thing that one thing that happened to us was is we we accidentally forgot to disable the member logic discount <laughs> and so they were a member was able to go on there and buy gift cards for basically nothing oh. and <laughs> It was hilarious. It was only one. And then we caught it and we're like, oh my God. But um, but they were honest and they were like, Yeah, I just figured it was a glitch. Like, yeah, don't pay anything today. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, uh, it uh um I I it is a unique strategy. And I and I want to clarify this. The reason why it's called the powder keg is not anything to do with the tiered strategy. It has to do with this very obscure thing that takes a year to perfect in practice. And that's basically not offering a discount. I think the biggest thing that makes this work for me Agreed. is that yeah. I don't have any discounts or promotions. And in fact, like I work with Matt Phillips too. And he's like, you sure you don't want a discount? I'm like, no, we'll just sell it like it is, you know, like offering a fire and ice for $49 now today. Well, that that's the same as what the price is, but still people are buying it because they're like, wow, this is great. I'm going to do this. So we don't, and we don't like publish, publicize our prices. So oftentimes people don't even know what the price of the service is. So they're expecting to pay whatever it is. And so I don't want to give them an incentive to pay any less and, you know, compete with myself, you know, you know, it's not important to me. So, but I did this because I'm actually specifically trying to drive gift card sales. And I'm not saying service credits. I agree that the service credits, the packages are great too. And there is a definitely a utility to that, but the gift cards were intentionally pushed because I want those gift cards in the hands of other people, not the people who bought them, but the people that are going to receive them, because that's going to be a huge lead stream for new guests. And that, that actually does generally work if they redeem them. Now, I'm on five years. I had to I had to expire like forty thousand dollars in liabilities, which and yeah. pay the taxes on that, which sucks. But <laughs> you know, like that. I mean, actually, I I realized that things were even done wrong. So now I owe interest to the IRS, which I paid too. But like you know, so make sure you you do your laws right. But uh, Jeannie, you had a question. I did. Yeah. So Jonathan, you and I have discussed this in the past, but on your powder keg model, how do you prevent somebody from purchasing? one gift card at the four gift card price. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, it does happen. And and here's the thing. Okay. So it, I have experimented with this for years. Do I put the full price gift card at the top or do I put the discounted price gift card at the top of the list? Well, here's the deal. I've actually put, I've decided thoroughly that you should put the full price or the higher price gift card at the top You'll get people that go in there and add seven or eight of that higher price gift card. And they're just so busy that they just buy them all at, at the $5 increment. And they think that they got a deal. Now you all might be thinking like, wow, John, that you're, you just kind of ripped them off. Well, no, they ripped themselves off because they weren't paying attention. Now the same can happen for people that just buy one gift card because they think they're clever. And this is absolutely true. We'll get person that's like, oh, look at a $49 gift card. And it specifically says you need to buy four or more. Um, and when they do, we look at the sales history and we're like, yo, this person only bought one. And we'll actually email them. We'll call them. We'll bombard them. And at the end of the night, we'll refund that transaction and send them an email saying you didn't buy the right quantity. It always happens where they call us back and they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I would actually like to buy all four. And then we charge them for all four afterwards, or they just don't call us back. They also don't give the gift card to anyone, you know, if they didn't follow the rules. Now there's no logic that makes it so that I can prevent someone from doing that. But I will tell you, it's exceptionally rare. Yeah, I was going to say it might be like 2% of people or something. It's Yeah, it's super rare. People are generally pretty honest. Like, they're not trying to break the system. Um, I wish the hell... Yeah, it was like, like two out required. of hundreds of gift cards. Yeah, oh, I had you... like two out of, you know, 600 gift cards sold. Two people did that. And I chose to not even go after it. I'm happy getting 50 bucks yeah. for a gift card the way I was going. So it was like, hey, you know. you you I We didn't did know $10 you... increments last year. Did that work for you, Matt? I'm interested now. Yeah, so a single gift card was the same price as a single float. We did no discount mm -hmm. on a single gift card, and we sold like 180 of them. And then we did $10 on. We do 80 for a single. 
I, I'm anti-sales psychology, so all my stuff is even, but whether that's good or bad, it's a different conversation again, but 80, 70 for two, 60 for three, 50 for four, and that's where we stopped it. Any more than that, we 50, 50 is our basement price for 60 minute floats. And I mean, we did really well on it. Yeah, that's really great to hear. And and again, I have to preface it, like it, it this doesn't work for everybody because one of my really good friends, Elliot, told me that it completely <laughs> flopped and I felt so bad, like I should write him a check for 50 grand or something for the sale he missed out on. <laughs> but, you know, he's like, look, I tried. And I'm like, I think theoretically what happened was, is, you know, you you tried to focus all that attention into one day but you already offered deals throughout the year. So like if you're going to make a sale that is going to be the best, it has to be the absolute best sale. So like if you're already selling a float for a first time guest at $49 or something, it's going to be extremely difficult to sell gift cards in general. Does that make sense? At least what I, I, I would find, because why would anyone come in? They're already receiving that discount as a first time guest uh, or somebody who just wants to buy a bunch of gift cards for themselves, I mean, you're just not going to see the same results. So we don't offer first-time discount. All services are full-priced across the board. Uh, Lindy, you you wanted to chime in there. Yeah, I just had a question. What percentage increase in sales are you seeing using this strategy? Um, so Do you do it for two days? Yeah. So, so, uh, between two days, um, at float light, we generate roughly about 60 to $70,000. Uh, but I'm going to tell you again, I tried it last year. So last year was my first, I, 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 this is the problem. When I tell people this, they get shocked. They're like, wow, how do you do that? And, and Matt, I hear you with the 600 gift cards. Cause we're like right on track for the same, like, are you talking, this is between all five of your locations or is it per location? Uh, am I still muted? Uh, no, that was all. Well, we were only four locations at the time, and it was oh. across the business. So, yes. Yeah, so so was, I think it was like uh, I'm just looking at it now to get the numbers. It was like 250 of them sold of uh, buying at the at the four rate, and we did like 100. Yeah, that makes sense. So we did like 150 at the single. We did 150 full price gift cards. We did. 120 at the discount with buying two gift cards. We did 60 at the three gift cards. And then the most we did 240 at the four gift card rate. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm sure. So in this, this similar to me, like it's always, you get the most at the highest rate, um, which if you think about it kind of makes sense and it skews my data when I look at, cause I use the helm when I look at the chart, you know, if you go to the chart view, like it's really weird to see because like I have spikes every year, like huge spikes. And like, that's always just the one month or if I sort it by day um, where it's showing me like what the busiest time is. Um, and, you know, like I, I like I've shared it on the collective. I'd be willing to share it here now, too. Um, but, you know, again, the only problem is here. I'll, I'll just real quickly. I'll just share my screen. And, and you might be able to see it or not. I don't know. But, but um, you know, like, like, like around this point here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, what the hell? So like, you see how there's these crazy spikes, you know? So, um, and, and like, you can kind of see that, you know, there's this one here that kind of, and this one. So these are the Black Friday sales. And um and uh I mean I'm st I'm still trying to figure out if this promotion is is actually going to work again for the last uh for this last time running or for this this year that is. So I'm always looking at better ways of uh you know making making this promotion better. Now I have to figure out how to turn this thing off. How do I turn off the uh screen share? Jeannie, do you know how to do that? I'm sorry, guys. Um, oh, my God. Turn I'll off. just chime in. Like, how do you, it, It's impossible to know unless you figure out how to get into a parallel universe and do yeah. it with, with a different sale or just run your normal prices through the holidays. 
you could potentially sell just as much at all full price. But I, I we noticed a significant increase in excitement and people buying extra gift cards because of the incentive to buy the extra gift cards. But really, it's it's really hard to like A, B, test that or see what. I mean, you can compare against times that aren't the holidays and how you do, and it's gonna, it's always gonna be busier. But you know, it's tough to kind of do that assessment. There we are. We're back. Nice. Sorry about that, guys. But but yeah. So it again, it you're absolutely right. You, it all it is all based on a number of factors to be able to get there. Rebecca, you wanted to ask a question too. Uh, yeah, just really quick. Do you guys ever put um, just a limit on how many of that they can buy that, you know, no. any person can buy, but no, I've tried to sell as many as possible, honestly. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, so I don't want to get stuck on this for too long um, because again, there's information out there. I want to make sure that we also address like, what are the strategies for marketing? Right. Um, which is probably why a lot of you guys are also here. Um, and this is probably a good question for you, Matt. Like, what do you find is the most effective marketing channel? I mean, here's the thing. Um, 100%, you know, would be text messaging, but it is also the most risky, you know, right now, right? The one thing I will tell somebody out there that's interested in texting, especially if somebody's got multiple services, like let's say you're a center out there that has like red light therapy, floating halo therapy let's say you have like six or more services or something like that right one of the most and and obviously if you have six different services you probably have one or two of them that are just dying right that are just dying sitting there maybe not really doing much right mm -hmm. so while this this can also be done via email right it doesn't need to be texting but one of the most like one of the best things that I've found for making a lot of money would be the strategy of, um, for example, if you have Helm, right? If you disable everything you have on the package section of your Helm, right? And let's say you create a package in Helm for each service, but you only assign one credit to it. So let's say on Black Friday, you're going to have, let's say usually your floats are 79 and let's say you're crazy, you're gonna do it for 49, right? So you're offering a $49 float for Black Friday, right? And then you can set a limit like three per person and put an overall limit only like 37 remaining. And then let's say you have, you know, Fire Nice. Fire Nice is crushing right here, no, right now, no reason to do a crazy discount on that, right? But let's say that's usually 69, let's say you also put that at 49, right? You do the same thing, limit three per person, only blank remaining. But let's say you have red light therapy and let's say red light therapy is just dying, right? You have nobody using red light therapy. And let's say that you have that at $35 typically, right? Well, you could offer red light therapy for 10 bucks and do the same thing, assign, you know, one credit. And then your messaging can be like Black Friday starts now at your float center, right? And because your savings on red light therapy would be let's say like if you're doing 10, you know, divided by 35, that's, that's a 72% savings, right? So the messaging can be like Black Friday starts now, save up to 72% period, promotions available on all services. And then you tell them, maybe you have like six different services that you have promotions on, but you lead with the messaging of save up to blank percentage, right? And then you send them directly to the package section of Helm. And again, this could be done either email or done, you know, via text. Text obviously works better, but incredibly risky. Not telling you guys to send a text, right? Well, why is it incredibly risky, Matt? Can you tell me, can you, can uh, you elaborate you on that? If you don't have, um, with the new can spam act in 2023, if you don't have, you know, uh, terms and conditions and privacy policy on your website, and clear opt-in instructions to get your list, right? Um, that you can show, you know, how they're opting in. Um, those are really the three most riskiest things. Uh, other than that, you need to make sure too that you're communicating that um, in your privacy policy that um, 
it's not intended for anybody under 18. Uh, you need to obviously, you also need to communicate that you're not responsible for any charges like um, that may be processed through their text care or whatever. There's a couple I different see. things, right? So, I mean, here's the thing. It's risky. So but isn't also- that mostly a limitation on the provider? Like, I mean, it's it's on us, obviously, to have that information. But, mm-hmm. like, that's more of a limitation that the provider imposes on the customer using the service. You no, know, the provider, it's very, I mean, there's a great company out there that you, that that is very easy to get through, right? But, no, it's more about, like, you can actually get sued, you know? Gotcha. Really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah, experience share. I got sued and had to settle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not, it, here's the thing. If you do it right, a text can, you know, th- it's a very small chance you will, but the text is going to get you way more income than, you know, probably the lawsuit would if it happened to you. But so you could just look at doing this via email. Right. But like if you send them directly to, you know, Helm and you have this loss leader that has like a 70% discount because that service is dying and you put limitations like limit three per person, only blank remaining, it becomes like a feeding frenzy. You know, and it's very easy, you know, if, if it's done right, especially if you have like a customer list of 5,000 or more people to do 15 grand from an email or, you but know, a text, that... you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm... I would say. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, I mean, um, I didn't mean to sidetrack you there, but this is the first time I heard about this text thing. So now I'm worried. I'm when you up, if you upload your list into a texting platform, you, you, they make you acknowledge that all of those people have properly, uh, given permission. I think I did acknowledge it, but I just clicked through that. So I'm just stupid. And yeah. yeah I acknowledge it was an existing customer. I got served. I had a lawyer at my door or uh, somebody handed me papers at my door over it. Okay. I, I won't take up any more time on that, but. Yeah, no, no, I understand. Uh, so this information that is useful to learn about for everybody, because texting is one of the most efficient, but now uh, we should explore that safely. Um, you know, I, I think that, Matt, you're right, though, about the email side of things. Like we we try to send it like tomorrow morning, an email goes out. Um, I actually double the Veterans Day email as a preview for the Black Friday. It works out perfectly. And of course, like like a lot of us do, I offer free floats from Veterans Day to Thanksgiving for veterans only with a verified ID. Um, and that becomes another lead generator into the Black Friday and holiday promotion opportunity because a lot of those veterans actually, believe it or not, they, they do buy gift cards uh, for their families and uh, they're a really good source and one free float is worth it. Totally. Like, especially considering you're giving back to the community in that respect and veterans are a huge, important part of a, of a float center. I think it should be if it's not. Um, So uh, I have a couple questions. I mean, we kind of addressed the text and the emails, um, but have you found any success in particular with like, let's say giveaways or holiday community events or holiday markets or anything like that? You're asking me? I, I personally- You don't really focus on that stuff. I, I guess I'm asking more the the entire group veterans here. Day, yeah, I mean, I'm having, you know, you were talking about Veterans Day. I'm having huge success with one center right now um, for Veterans yeah. Day, but no, nothing really for- holidays like well that. i think that the, the the lesson is is that if you have something that's in such cl- close proximity to a holiday sale you might be able to piggyback some of that momentum into that so i would imagine matt like maybe that's part of the strategy too like if you already have success with veterans day you might be trying to utilize some of that momentum and build that right into the holidays potentially right possibly uh i mean to be honest i'm not really messaging it but it, but I do have a couple of float centers where it's like they do want to create awareness ads about the holidays to build, you know, kind of momentum. And I think that's definitely a good strategy, right. To, you know, spend a little budget or whether it's email, whether you want to just build up via email, you know, or even spend a little bit of money on Facebook ads, like just seven days before the sale, you know, creating awareness or excitement or seven or 10 days. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I actually have not done that, but I think that's a great idea, 100%, um, to to do that. One one good thing, I think, is on, on Google, um, anybody actually searching your name, you know, um, to, to, you know, not necessarily people searching floating, although you could do it that way, but 
you know, to make sure always to kind of communicate whatever your holiday specials are on Google to people typing in your brand name too, you know? Yeah. So you'd, you'd modify like your, 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 your ad word search, you know, yeah. and, and then you'd also maybe do some pre-rolls. Um, but, but yeah, so, so I guess just to kind of clarify a little bit on that, like for those who don't understand how some of these platforms work, um, you know, like when you're, when, when Matt, speaks in particular about building awareness. Um, you know, if you have a specific campaign that's going to be running from period of time, that's what your objective would be is to build awareness around it. Um, and, uh, and it does cost money. I mean, like that's the biggest thing. And one thing that I, that I try to encourage people to do, and I know not everyone has an infinite budget here, but, and, and I don't either, but sometimes I feel like I have to, because like, and I just take a huge risk, but that's the whole point. I do take risks. I feel like I'm a little bit like I'm gambling sometimes on Facebook because when I start a brand new campaign, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I have faith that it's going to work. And I know I've seen the success. So putting a little bit of money behind the advertising is fundamental. I think that if you find that your holiday promotions are not working, it's because nobody knows that they exist even if you have this like little sign out in front or you post on your social media as an organic post, just keep in mind that these companies, these big massive conglomerates like Facebook and Google, they're not going to show that to people. Like they want you to pay money to show it to people. So just keeping that in mind, like I guess the most organic thing you might have is your email. So, but you're then relying on an existing uh, lead that you've already picked up to then come to purchase the gift cards. So um, one of the best ways to spend money on Facebook is to generate more leads um, instead of just like, you know, expecting, um, <clears throat> uh, expecting people to just buy, you know, like there's processes. And that's one thing that Matt offers is, is part of his services is helping with that process. And, and again, uh, Matt, I don't mean to shout you out if you, if you're at like a huge caseload, but there was somebody in the, in the comments that did ask if there's, if there's any information they can look you up at least uh, maybe like a website um, or something that they can contact you about. Yeah, I can, I can type it in. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And then Sally, uh, I think, uh, I do know the answer. Or I'm sorry, Lindy. I do know the answer to the question. The Helm currently, as far as API direct, you know, communication only does work with Mailchimp, uh, without having to set up some advanced webhook logic using Zapier or something to that effect, which again is going to accrue more of a cost. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, oh, Nadia, you have a question go ahead yeah i have my husband over here he'll probably so we were we were thinking about doing flat amount gift cards this year versus trying to do the regular price 70 to 59 or whatever do you have any suggestions on flat dollar amount gift certificates i guess because when you got went for 30 minutes 60 minutes 90 minutes it seems like it gives too many choices in the consumer. So I was trying to, we're trying to streamline it. You know, we did flat dollar amounts. Do you have any suggestions? For yeah, yeah. So I, I, I you were breaking up a little bit. The actual yeah, but you're, you guys are breaking up a little bit, but I'm going to try to just reiterate so, I, so that we can answer this correctly. Um, you went from selling service credits on gift cards and now you're thinking about doing a dollar amount instead. Is that generally what you're thinking? Correct. And, Correct. There's so many okay. okay. Yeah. So because of the different time. There's so many different time frames. Yeah. Uh, so I, I can, I'll make one comment and maybe Matt and others might have some suggestions too, but what I found me personally was that if you have too many options on the gift card page, like, okay, so my first sale, I actually didn't even have much to sell at all. And they were like little radio dots. You ever seen that, Matt? Yeah. Where you yeah. just you just have like three options. I'll tell you, if you can make that work, that's always going to be your best bet, I feel like. Because as soon as you implement a drop down and you have too many options, 
It just confuses everything. Now, I tried doing six tiers, and I'll tell you, I'm not going to do that again. That was last year because I feel like the six tiers was too complex for people and that it blew people's brains up. And and so, and plus I tried to have six tiers of fire and ice, six tiers of floating, six tiers of massage. And that is, and, and if you look, and then I have different modalities of massage and the massage therapists were like, well, we want this massage on there too. So the list of services that could be offered became so big that thank God, right before the sale hit, I was like, look, we got to get rid of some of this stuff because it was just too much on that list. I feel like if the list scrolls, it's too big. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Matt, but I liked the idea of how you were like, just remove all the packages and keep like one or two different items because that makes sense to me. Yeah, I'm all about simplicity. Um, you know, I talk about it all the times. Like if you have 10, 12 options, it's just like option overload and you're often going to just lose the person that comes to your site. Yeah. They're analyzing so many things in their head and they they think themselves come back. Um but yeah, I would say that if you're thinking about doing uh, a value-based gift card, you know, to to maybe have three, four options tops, you know, and really I think value-based is super simple. You know, you could give a greater discount the more they spend, you know, it doesn't have to be too, too great. And, um, you know, um, but yeah. how would you, how would you do that? You'd have to be like, it's this amount that you're buying but you're actually going to receive this amount on the gift card. I would assume yeah, I would that's think, how you would set think, that up. Yeah. I think it would be like, you know, you know, you have to really analyze where, what kind of float center you are and, you know, um, what kind of value you feel like you need to give people to make things, you know, essentially, you know, work. Right. But yeah, it could be like, you know, buy 40, get $50 and in, in credit by 75, get a hundred or, and maybe that's too much. Maybe that's not going to move it. You know, I don't know, you know, who you are, but um, I, I would think that, yeah, you could maybe go from 50 to 100 to 200 and maybe like 500. And that could be your four, you know, four eight tiers, maybe, you know. If you do, in fact, do that, uh, we would love to look for you, you guys. So please just send us an email flotation.org or you can send me an email j rogue at float light I, I just like to learn how that works for you um i, and, I feel like that would work well when you have multiple uh, modalities like what you're talking jonathan to help minimize the amount of items you do a dollar amount and then and people could choose you know the recipient can choose what they want to use that's a really good point yeah i was you talking know? to somebody about the powder keg doing value based because uh, they had multiple services i thought it was a good idea it's just um yeah, it's just a matter of um setting it up in Helm. Right? Now you get me thinking. Geez, I might I might consider that. And Alex is listening too, so she's like, "Huh, oh, maybe we could make that easy." Uh, Sally, go ahead. Um, yeah. Has anybody ever tried anything like? Here's a package of two floats to get you through to the uh, like two winter floats, and they expire at Valentine's Day. Or here is, uh, three floats to get you through till the summer, and like. It's it's a specific gift certificate that does have an expiration to maybe not have those laws apply, but to also do some serious discount without having a debt out there open ended. Well, I think packages are always a good, easy thing to promote, you know, um, not specifically like, hey, I think going back to the membership part, if you're communicating this is a get this will get you through through Valentine's Day or this will get you through to summer, you're kind of saying in a way like, um, you know, this, you don't need to become a member, right? I think that's also communicating that, you know, but, um, but, I, but I, yeah, I think packages, simplicity is great. I like the powder keg. It works, you know, for people. I always tell my clients, like, I love simplicity. So like, for, I always recommend, you know, for Black Friday and, you know, Cyber Monday to do single floats, you know, that way it's a lower barrier to entry for people that can't spend 200 or, um, if, if somebody wants to, you know, spend 500, they'll buy 10, right. Um, on the back end, a little bit different, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think packages are just very simple. They're easy to explain. Um, you know, the powder keg's great, but if you're here, there, the powder keg setup is one part, but then explaining the powder keg properly is another part too, right? <laughs> yeah. It, so if you're not, if you have it set up properly, but you're not communicating it right, that it, it, it fails in, you know, translation. So if you just have a two float pack for, 
109 or whatever it is i mean that's just easy you know it's super easy you know to 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 put out there you know so it's it's even hard to explain the powder keg to people even me like the one who came up with the idea it's still hard to explain it like it's it's a complicated strategy and it's not necessarily useful for everybody um but i have to say matt and and also sally the one the the power that you and this you mentioned earlier the power of packages and being able to put one service credit in a package is extremely useful and you can think of it as a wrapper. See, that's the way I looked at it because I knew about this for a long time. I was like, can you put one service credit in a package? It effectively allows you to rename the service credit if, and, and put some parameters on it. So utilize that to your advantage. The only thing about service credits is, is, that, is that they are limited to the individual who's buying them and they have to create an account. So it's two different factors. Remember with gift cards, you don't have to create an account. So there's a benefit there. They can just throw their credit card on and bam. And some people, uh, I swear this has happened too. They legit put a credit card in and I don't even know if the helm, like what happened, but the, the email was like not even real. And they were like, I totally lost the gift card. It disappeared into the ether. And it it's true. Like it did, like they didn't put any information down. They just bought a gift card and donated it to the universe, you know? So, um, but yeah, so like there are, you got to think about like the different levels for things. I often look at like packages like Matt is describing is like, this is a really useful tool for anybody who you want to take action for themselves typically. Um, Cause I haven't really found an easy way to make those packages easy to be given other people i'm sure there's a, a workaround or a way you can do it but and then uh, speaking on gift cards another great thing about them is the person that's receiving it doesn't know what the other person paid for it you know so if you do do a powder keg or something that slightly cuts some membership or if you do that you don't need to right but if you do the person receiving the gift card you know on the other hand you know they don't know what the person paid for it too you know so that's Maybe a, a buy them a, a float of the month club. You know, here's your float for January. You can use February's float in January, but you, you know, you can't use January's float after January. If only Maybe the home something had like that, that promote that memberships kind of, that way. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if somebody would want to commit to a monthly charge for a friend too, you know, but possibly yeah. they pay for it all up front. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That could be good. Yeah. A four month membership, you know, whatever, however many months they wanted to do. Yeah. Well, one experiment that I'm going to be running effectively and, 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 and Matt, you'll be able to see it, uh, on, on, in the, in the ad manager, but, uh, I, I do intend to implement this advanced kind of like, I'm going to offer a greater discount for members strategy on the tier in hopes that there will be people who are like, damn, I really should just join the membership, but we're already working on the logistics of this because we're not going to allow people to buy the membership if they've never been to float light. Like yeah. they just will not be able to buy the membership. In fact, we don't offer the membership to the general public anyway. Like it's members are only sold to people who have been here once. They'll straight up be denied otherwise because we don't sell it on the store. But that I think will capture the attention of a lot of people who are like on the fence about the membership. And maybe some people will exploit it because, you know, I don't really have a contract so I can get them to join the membership. They'll get their one credit. They'll buy all the floats. Will they meet the three month minimum? I have no idea, but. I'm willing to take a risk and maybe we'll be able to generate some memberships out of it. So, cool. yeah. Anybody else have anything else? Uh, I, I know this is a lot of information, um, but if there's anyone out there that were like, I really expected to come to this round table or this event and hear something, this is your opportunity to ask the question because we really try to cover everything. It's just so hard. Uh, Rebecca, you have your hand raised. Uh, I just had a, just a quick little question and kind of was spinning around in my mind because again, still new. And we did just, Matt just helped me with a membership drive. Um, that was really helpful. And I was trying to think of like a, I'm trying to get people in for massage as well. Um, floats are doing really well, but massage is still kind of like lagging behind. And um, so I was thinking of just doing maybe like a 20% off all massage services to, through the end of the year as, as like a thank you for our, our members that have signed up with us our first year. Um, 
any thoughts around that? Like, is that sad? Then when I take it away at the beginning of the year, I like... would be, I would be careful because like, you don't want to, I mean, it's great to offer value to your members, but if you don't continue to offer that value to anyone else who also joins, then they're going to feel disenfranchised. Um, well, I mean, that's why I would kind of put the limit on it, like till the end of the year, even if you sign up for a new membership, this is kind of like our thank you for signing up with us our first year. And that special will end at the end of the year. If you, if you, if it's allowed for anybody who joins the membership now, yeah, yeah. that yeah, may actually, I think it may actually work, uh, because I, I know that myself, Greg Griffin, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone else has done this, and I think that they have because they they seen the traction that we got. But like, as soon as we were able, as soon as we were around doing our price increase, mm -hmm. we we like did a big membership push, and I sold like eighty, like sixty to eighty members. I don't exactly remember the number, but it was like a huge amount of memberships in one month. And Greg yeah. Griffin did the same. Like he, he I you know, I, I shared mine, and then he. You probably saw that on the collection. Yeah, I, I, in my research on the powder cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, this is totally different. But like, if you can come up with some kind of a a situation where there's some kind of special offer to members up until a certain point. But yeah. the thing that works for this is that there has to be a change with the program. So like, if you can get people on because this is a better deal, and, and they're going to be part of the legacy program, because it's going to be changing soon, like, maybe that's a good strategy. In fact, I, I theorized about a way of doing that yearly and i just haven't come up with the idea yet but it would be really useful i think if if if, if matt you help the float center if you can get if you can get float center selling 100 memberships a month man like like everybody here will be paying you their entire bank accounts because <laughs> that's the one that's the one not to crack like just selling memberships constantly like that's what we all want you know talking about memberships um something i worked really well last year and some of y'all might think this is crazy um but in January, since it's still kind of holidays for New Year's, um, talk about this. That's a good time to push memberships. Um, one thing that we did uh, that had a lot of success was offering, you know, some people did like half off the first month. Some people did like 23 bucks for the first month. We had some people that offered the membership for a dollar the first month. But what we did is we extended the minimum commitment, right? And, you know, they both, all three of the versions did well, but obviously the dollar membership was killer. It crushed. Um, so let's say if you have a three month commitment, you know, um, you could offer like dollar for the first month and extend your monthly commitment to five. That might be a little extreme for you. I mean, it worked really well. Like, no, but we had no issues and 90% of those members are still members today, you know, from what I've seen. But um, I feel like that's still a holiday. Yeah, yeah. I want to kind of put that out there. It, um, it, it worked pretty well. You know. So, so one thing that we do, cause we, we sell like last month we sold 30 memberships. Like in my team was very proud because I bonused every single float guy at a hundred dollars for doing that. So they had a little bit of motivation. Um, and I'm proud of them for that, but like one, one strategy and I give them the tools. So now if it's just you running your float center, you give yourself the tools. Well, one thing that we do that, that works is that you, um, is for me, is similar to what you just mentioned, Matt, like I have a guest come in and they're already paying full price for the service, right? I tell them after their service is done or we we have the option to tell them after their service is done that we will give them their first month of the membership for free because they already paid for it. Cool. I'll we'll set their expiration or we'll set their start date their their payment start date 1 month from the day. Nice. You see that's what I'm great. saying? Yeah, and what... True. That sells huge amounts of memberships if you if you get it set up correctly, and that's that's one strategy that does work. So anybody that wants any insight into memberships, that's how we do it. Yeah, I think in house like that's killer. I'd like to see more people adopt that. I know True Rest does that, and they crush members. Yeah, yeah. You know? Ma Ma so Mandy kind of shared a little bit yeah, on, yeah, on yeah, her strategy. I think, I think people should be doing that all the time. You know, it's mm -hmm. one thing I will say about membership, um, and this actually this is the best way to explain it that. I'm not in-house. I have ran float centers before, but I got this actually from Lavender Gill. And I think it's the best way to talk about membership. Would, you know, literally ask them, you know, how they feel, if they feel anything different and just literally ask them, do you want to hear about our memberships? They're always going to say yes after they get out of the tank, you know, and that just by them, they're never going to say no. And by them just saying yes, it just gives you, you know, the ability to share with them what the price is and, after you share with them, don't say anything and let them say yes or no. <laughs> you know? Wow. <laughs> well, 
if you guys know Lavender, like he's a he's a powerful force and and uh, yeah. of of positive huggable energy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, no, that that's that's really useful. It's always good to talk a little bit about memberships. Um, but we are we are just over an hour. I want to make sure that everyone, anyone else, have any other thoughts uh, that they'd like to share. I feel like there's a lot of good information here. Um, and hopefully we we touch on a little bit of the nuances that maybe some of you guys are struggling with, but go into the holiday promotions with inspiration. Like you will be able to do this, but you got to start now because we're only, I think we're less than two weeks away. Um, so really start plan, like your planning phase, you still have a little time, but really start pushing the idea of getting that information out to people, however you do it um, and uh, make it, make it work. Paul, do you have something you would like to add? I just wanted to say thank you to you, Greg Griffin and Matt Phillips, because we just completely stole your ideas. <laughs> uh, we're do we're almost at the end of our first membership drive since we've been in business. And um, nominally for how long you guys were in business and how many members you say you've got in your 30 day period, we've done just as well. We didn't get 60 or 80, but we've doubled our memberships. Nice. Um, based on, uh, it was really that Greg Griffin post on the Flow Collective that we kind of copied almost verbatim. And Matt- You did a, pr been, you did a price increase? Yeah, we're doing yeah, the price gotcha. increase. Um, yep. On November 16th, our prices are increasing. And um, Matt, especially accolades to you, man, you've been just extremely patient with me because I do not understand any of this stuff. And just the the effort that that man's put into our float center to help us, uh, our facility to help us gain memberships and traction here has been remarkable. And I just wanted to say thank you guys because I didn't, I never, you know, we only get to see each other at the float conference, but I wanted to say thank you guys because it's been a real, real help for us. And um, so just thank you. Appreciate you. Same. Thank Jonathan, you. Idea. Oh. Jonathan started it, you know. Oh, come on. Well, um, no, I mean, you cry. I mean, dude, I, that was brilliant. Honestly, you know? look, man, like, like you are the genius content creator. I came up with an idea and shared it. I will say though, Paul, thank you for having, um, the young lady. And I, and I apologize, I forget her name, your manager. Sorry. She, yeah, she, I really appreciate you having her come to, um, uh, the, the, the public education, uh, committee. Oh, and yeah. being part of that, it's great to see new faces. Thank you also, Matt, of course. Um, that committee is growing, and that's the actual committee that creates these webinars. And and now that I have stepped in a role as president, uh, I still want to be able to be here and support these webinars, but I don't also think it's necessary for me to host these. So if anybody out there that is a member of the FTA would like to help out with these committees and maybe help curate a little bit of content and is a little extroverted, um, I am honestly, I'll be honest, I'm an extroverted person. I know I'm surrounded by a lot of introverts right now. That's okay. Uh, so, so an industry needs somebody like me, but I also have other things I'd like to pursue too. So uh, we have multiple committees for the FTA. And uh, if you guys are interested, please Please, please, please come join us. We are doing lots of fun things. And trust me, these aren't boring committees. Uh, we often get into positive debates. Sometimes we 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 like to to cheers one another, especially if Roy is in the committee. Um, you know, he'll talk a little bit about beer. You know, <laughs> there's other things too. Um, but uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone here. Um, and again, as we wrap up today's roundtable, I want to extend a heartfelt thanks to every each and every one of you for sharing your valuable insights and innovative ideas. Your contributions have not only enriched our discussion, but also have provided us practical strategies to take our to take our businesses into the next level during the holiday season. Um, and I do wish everyone here the very best holidays, honestly, um, and great amounts of pros prosperity. I think that your gift card sales will do well. Have trust and faith in yourself. You can do this. Um, and uh, and you'll see the the results moving forward. I think that's the biggest thing about these holiday sales is like what happens afterwards? Like people just book the tanks and that's what you want. You want people to come. You want people to redeem your gift cards too. Trust me. Uh, a person that redeems a gift card is like a hundred times more valuable than the person that leaves a gift card in the drawer. Um, so uh, really remind people when they buy your gift cards, like, Hey, Make sure that whoever you give this to, you tell them to use it. And I actually say that to people and they're like, 
I will make sure that they use it <laughs> because, you know, and then they, they drag them along by their, by their arm. Like you're going to get in this tank. You're getting in the tank. You're going to love it. And they usually do. Um, so um, I want everybody to also look at marking their calendars. We're not going to have an FTA round table in December, but January 18th at six o'clock, we'll be diving into the critical topic of annual planning and operations to ensure your businesses are ready for the new year. This is going to be a really valuable round table. And we have some amazing industry experts that's going to be on. So anybody who's not an FTA member in this meeting right now, it's really a nominal fee. It's not that much at all. Please join. We really do rely on your membership to help us push this industry forward. And we are making strides. Jeannie is actually one, our treasurer. She's joined us today. Uh, we have an amazing, amazing board of, uh, of leaders and we are always looking for new people to jump on. One way to do that is by joining a committee. What's up, Jeannie? Sorry. Go ahead. Just to say, and you can pay your membership monthly if that is more affordable for your budget. Yeah. And, and you can do that at flotation.org uh, slash join. And uh, we'd love to, we'd love to see you moving into the new year. And uh, thank you for everyone who participated. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Uh, I should say thank you, Matt's. Uh, you guys have <laughs> really helped us share some really valuable insights uh, into uh, your holiday promotions. And thank you everyone else who also chimed in, shared their promotions. And we, we look forward to talking to you in the future. And if anybody has any questions, right, feel free to email me, reach out, what have you. So what's your email again? Uh, J rogue, J R O U G at F L O A T L I G H T.com. I'll link it in the chat too. Thank you. Love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Bye everybody. Happy holiday. Happy holidays. Thank Good luck everyone. everyone. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Bye now. Ciao.